Welcome along to the latest offering here from the Blood Red podcast. I'm Guy Clark as we talk about the intensifying links around Steven Gerrard's managerial future. We're going to look at the developing story, his successes at Rangers, how that's attracted Aston Villa and whether or not a move to Villa Park could well be the next pin on the map back to Anfield. Coming up, we'll be gauging the opinion from Ibrox and down the M6 in Birmingham as well. Firstly, though, from the Rangers review, it's a pleasure to welcome Derek Clark to Blood Red. No relation, but Derek, we are good pals. How are you feeling regarding all of this? I suppose it must be quite nervy times from the Rangers' perspective. Yeah, it was a, a struggle to sleep last night. I'm not going to lie, Guy. Um, uh, when the when Dean Smith was sacked on Sunday, uh, firstly, I think it was a, a harsh sacking, to, to say the least. Um, but, but Gerard, of course, was uh, linked with the job. He's linked to pretty much every Premier League job at the moment. I didn't think too much of it, given... But Villa have got a track record of hiring and firing managers given their lowly league position. Um, but this certainly seems different to other jobs he's been linked with. Um, it, it's it's a gallant momentum and pace linking him with the job, so much so that you're hearing from sources saying the deal's already done. It could be announced at, at any point. So um, I'm just trying to sort of reason with myself, trying to find out why you would possibly leave Rangers at this point in time as well. Not good timing to, to join a club like Aston Villa. It's a it's a difficult one to to try and uh try and think that the reasons behind it. Yeah, no, definitely. In terms of then kind of Steven Gerrard from an overview as a managerial perspective. Of course, Liverpool fans know all too well what he offered on the pitch. But from the dugout, we've we've done a number of these podcasts kind of over the last three years whilst he's been at Ibrox charting and tracking how he's been getting on as a manager. How would you surmise his, his tenure at Ibrox? Yeah, he's been a, a massive success. There's no doubt about it. Uh, it's been a, a slow rebuilding job. The club was a, an absolute shambles when he, when he took over. Celtic were miles ahead, uh, steamrolling towards uh, 10 in a row. Of course, they had Brendan Rodgers at the helm. Uh, Gerard comes in, and y- year on year, the, you can see incremental improvements in the team. More so in Europe, you would say, where they had absolutely no right to get into the Europa League group stages in that first season. They played four qualifiers, um, and he's got them into the Europa League group stages year on year, albeit this season it was a a massive disappointment to go out to, to Malmo in the Champions League qualifiers. Um, but year on year, he's getting closer and closer to Celtic. Um, and last season, it culminated in winning the league title, of course, going on the season unbeaten, uh, winning it by 25 points. It was truly one in a, a lifetime perfo- uh, seasons, really. It's one of those you, you don't really see as much. That's why uh, there's been a bit of grumble this season, perhaps, because performances and results haven't been anywhere near the standard we seen last season, but I think it's it's unfair in, in a way to uh, point the finger with regards to that. I mean, look at Liverpool when when they won the league, they had a sort of hangover the following season, um, but they're still top of the league, but by four points, and uh, they've got a, a huge League Cup semi final coming up after the international break. They've got a huge Europa League game against Sparta Prague. It's pretty much a winner takes all coming up at Ibrox as well. And Steven Gerrard is has brought the club into this uh, to compete with, um, I wouldn't say that Europe's elite, but some of the best clubs in Europe. Um, the likes They've beat the likes of Porto, Feyenoord um, and, and Benfica that they've uh, drawn twice with them. So um, he's got the team playing a, a brand of football that many Rangers supporters haven't seen before. Um, I mean, to put it in any context, when before he arrived, the season before, when Pedro Cachinha was the manager, Rangers went out to the, the fourth best team in Luxembourg in, in Europa League qualifiers. So it just shows you where he's taken the club on. Uh, so much so that, that the winners this season uh, of the Scottish Premiership are, are pretty much guaranteed uh, straight entry into the Champions League group stages. And that's all because of Steven Gerrard. So that just gives you an idea of the sort of job that he's done at Rangers. Yeah, and it's it's an institution, isn't it, Rangers, in, in how in, he's kind of gone in there and rebuilt the place, as you say. And I suppose, though, having arrived in, in kind of 2018, there must kind of been a feeling that maybe this moment would come for Rangers at some stage that should Steven Gerrard go in and do a job. And I suppose it only goes to speak to the level of the job he's done that a lot of people have even been speaking about. Could he just stay at Rangers until Jurgen Klopp finishes up at Liverpool, likely to be in 2024, and then make the move straight from Rangers to Liverpool, which when he went in there would have been almost unheard of for people to to think that would be possible. Yeah, there's there's a realization from Rangers fans that that time would come at some point. Um, his contract ends in 2024 in the summer, so you're thinking to yourself, 
the smooth transition he, he would go at that point. Um, no one felt that he would go to any other club in the Premier League. And it, he's been linked uh, numerous times. Even uh, he was linked to the Everton job a, a few months ago. And then you've had the likes of Leeds United. He's been linked with them. Newcastle win before they appointed to Eddie Howe. Uh, Spurs at a point as well. Um, but this one just certainly seems different. Um, I mean, the Rangers supporters, if Liverpool came calling today, uh, every single Rangers supporter would accept uh, that Steven Gerrard would pr probably be the front runner for that job and would accept him wanting to move to Anfield. But this is a hard one to digest. A lot of Rangers fans are trying to run it through in their minds and thinking if you left it perhaps at the end of the season, winning another trophy, another league title and perhaps one or two cups, they could maybe understand it more. But given that it's the timing of the decision, it just seems rather strange. And, and, and it goes against everything that, that you believe Steven Gerrard is with regards to loyalty, seeing contracts out and not leaving teams in the lurch, so to speak. So um, it's, it's caught everyone by surprise, this, this move. I don't think anyone envisaged he would go to uh, a different Premier League club, maybe a bridging club perhaps before making the step up um, for the, the Liverpool job. Yeah, it does make sense from the outside, you could say. Um, he could get Premier League experience, of course. He's going to have more money to play with um, and, and there'll be more eyes on him in the Premier League. Having said that, he's, he's not going to um, win any trophies down there at Aston Villa, with all due respect. I think a, a cup's the most likely option, but that's going to be extremely difficult. And I think just avoiding relegation will be an achievement down there, which doesn't really... Uh, that's not the Steven Gerrard that we, that we all know, is it? So it's, it's a strange one. Yeah, no, definitely. I also want to ask you kind of, you mentioned about going mid-season and of course it was what, two or three seasons ago, Brendan Rodgers left Celtic and I don't want to get under your skin mentioning them <laughs> too many times, but he left the other half of the old firm to go to, to Leicester City, a side that I know you've, you've kind of spent a bit of time watching as well and seen the job up close and personal that he's done there at Leicester City and the way in which he's built that. But a lot of people will draw comparisons and say, well, Brendan Rodgers had dominated the SPL and then came back down into the Premier League. And it was a great learning curve for him to kind of get that winning mentality and then coming in and, and taking on Leicester and pushing them to the next level. And people maybe draw parallels and say, well, that may be what Steven Gerrard would be looking to do with Aston Villa, who in their own right are a, a huge historic club within English football. But to me personally, there looks a lot of differences from a Leicester City side who, albeit it was a few years before, had won the Premier League title and had scaled some heights and had players who had turned down big moves, the likes of Jamie Vardy opting not to join yeah. Arsenal and, and staying at the club. Whereas Aston Villa, very much in transition, have sold their star in the summer. They brought in a number of high calibre players, but they're yet to really gel. It's, it'll be a difficult job to take on. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's different scenarios. Uh, I, know, I know that. Brendan Rodgers is, is pretty much a legacy bonfire when he left Celtic. He went from hero to zero uh, immediately. Uh, and I don't think he's welcome back up, up in Glasgow, to be honest, which I find hard to believe given the, the job he did there. I think uh, I could see why he would move to Leicester at that point. Um, I don't think that's a job that comes around all too often. And they're a club entirely different to Villa in terms of their ambitions, in terms of, like you say, Guy, where they are. They won the Premier League just few years earlier, um, the level of player that he has at his disposal and uh, how he could grow that, that 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 football club. Whereas you get Villa just recently back into the Premier League. Dean Smith, for me, done a fantastic job. They were an absolute shambles as well before he took over. Um, he deserved more time, in my opinion. But they're a club that, that may have aspirations of pushing up, trying to get in the top six, but it's going to be extremely difficult based on the calibre of player that, that they do have um, and based on the, the historical uh, factors as well, I mean, they're never really pushing for, for, for trophies early. I think Martin O'Neill was it, the last manager that had them that were uh, doing reasonably well. But um, you, you can't see the, them pushing that. Uh, I know West Ham are the outlier and many people have, have used them as an example where um, it's not a team you expect to be challenging in the top four, but but they are. David Moyes didn't, doing a great job, but for ex for, uh, what does success constitute at Villa? Like I said, is it getting into the, the top half of the table? It, it, Stephen Gerrard wants to be at a club, and he said before in, in press conferences and what have you in interviews, he wants to be at a club where there's a winning mentality, where you need to win at all costs, where a draw or a defeat and it's a crisis. He, he loves that pressure and he gets that at Rangers 
Um, I'm not sure he necessarily gets that at, at Villa. Yeah, no, it will be an interesting one to keep an eye on. I just want to speak to you about kind of the, the style of play then of Steven Gerrard that he's implemented at Rangers. And you spoke about obviously all of the successes of last season. We've seen a number of clubs who either really struggled behind closed doors with no fans there or actually excelled. And Rangers seem to very much be that because whilst kind of from the Liverpool perspective, it's easy to look in on Steven Gerrard's time at Rangers and say it's all been success. It's not quite been that, has it? Just before the, the pandemic hit, there was a lot of talk even at the time that you mentioned that pressure he thrives under, that he was under real pressure for his job. And then he goes and puts together a season like last year, which albeit wasn't in front of supporters. There must be, I suppose, I wouldn't say anger or resentment, but you mentioned the, the, the relationship that Brendan Rodgers has since had now with Celtic supporters. That What would it be like for Steven Gerrard with Rangers supporters? Should he then leave, given kind of that league title was landed when... Quite frankly, none of them were, were there really to be able to witness it. Yeah, but last season was the Holy Grail. Rangers had to win that league title. And you'll get uh, mainly opposition fans uh, up in Scotland saying uh, he was, he's only won one trophy in nine. Um, Jurgen Klopp's only won one domestic trophy um, at, at Liverpool, but it was the one that all Liverpool supporters wanted. Last season, the league title had to be delivered. Um, Celtic, of course, going for their, their 10 in a row. Now, if, for example, Steven Gerrard had won every cup since he came up here uh, and not won a league title, he'd, he'd have uh, been on his bike as quick as uh, Celtic were phoning the, the, the bus company to parade at the 10th league title. It's, it's, it's that uh, clear. So that that's he delivered that. Um, it was a fantastic achievement. Uh, but you're right, Guy, I think before the pandemic hit, um, Rangers had beat Celtic at Parkhead. Um, and we've all seen Gerard's emotion after that game. And then you're thinking to yourself, Rangers will power on here. There was a, a winter break. They came back and they were they went on a horrendous run of form, culminated in uh, being eliminated out of the Scottish Cup by Hearts. And Stephen Gerrard had a, 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 a post-match interview where he says he has to go away and think about things. And a number of Rangers supporters felt at that point he could be away. He might decide to walk away and he can't bring success to the club. But I think the pandemic, in a weird sort of way, helped Rangers. In effect, it allowed the players and the coaching staff to work with each other more. Um, uh, and we've seen that. It was evident last season when they just steamroller teams. They went the entire season unbeaten. Um, some of the football they were playing was was a joy to watch at times. Some of the goals they were scoring, they seemed to be scoring a uh, goal of the season at every other game. It was that good. Um, I mean, look at the Europa League when Kamar Roos scores that goal against Standard Liège. Um, so uh, it was uh, a joy to watch. It was just unfortunate, of course, that the supporters couldn't be in the ground uh, to witness such a historical season, albeit um, when Rangers turned up at Ibrox uh, for the uh, the season winning game pretty much you, you've seen the fans uh, outside thousands on the, of them in their droves even Gerard uh, took that video didn't he when he was driving into Ibrox and, and you've seen them all how much it meant um, even Gerard's celebrations in the dressing room afterwards when he went and uh, done a Klingsman uh, in, the, in the dressing room and all that sort of stuff so he shows you how much Rangers means to him and how much it meant um, and it was just uh, the supporters of course have been back in the ground this season the performances haven't been uh, as uh, swashbuckling as they were last season, but they're getting results uh, uh, in the main. Um, I know the last two games have scored 10 goals in the league uh, combined, so you're just thinking to yourself, they're getting back on track, they're getting players back, Ryan Kent was back, Ryan Jack was back at the weekend, um, and you're just thinking that they can go on a run now and, and pull away. However, if Gerard was to go, and of course it looks like um, his coaching staff as well, uh, it, it, it puts everything up into the air and it, it's up then to the director of football, Ross Wilson, to earn his corn and, and find a replacement, but it, it's not ideal. No, definitely. Final question then before we, we wrap things up from the Rangers' perspective. What's the pitch to keep Steven Gerrard at <laughs> Ibrox? If he's in the, the, the illustrious trophy room at Ibrox and the power brokers at the club are saying, come on, Stephen, stay here at the club. What's the message? What is the pitch to keep him north of the border? Well, he's always one about legacy, isn't he? And, and building a legacy and, and, and being a hero. Um, I know, know when he when he went down to speak to Jose Mourinho in 2005, when, when Chelsea tried to tempt him away from Liverpool, he, he had a, a good old thinking. He was thinking about the supporters and what it would mean to them. 
you just hope that you just feel that Steven Gerrard, I know he said before that there's two clubs in his life now, Rangers and Liverpool. He, he understands what it means to the fans. Um, he's a passionate guy. Um, if he leaves now, um, for me, his legacy is tarnished somewhat. He'll be forever welcome up in Glasgow. Everyone will be grateful for delivering 55. Um, but he can go on to greatness at Ibrox. He can deliver a second league title, get Rangers back into the Champions League. Uh, and really, that's that's the sort of pitch I'd imagine that the directors will be saying to Stephen, just have a think about this. You're going down to Aston Villa here. Um, what can you achieve down there? What What's realistic success? What What is it we can iron out? to try and keep you to stay. Even if I think he goes down and has and speaks to them, I don't think the Rangers supporters will be too best pleased, to be honest with you. I think uh, they want Gerard to stay, that they're infatuated with the guy. Um, but here, nothing should surprise you in football anymore. No, definitely not. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out. And coming up next here on Blood Red, we're going to hear the uh, perspective from Aston Villa speaking with Birmingham Live's Ashley Priest. So, having heard the view from Ibrox, let's get the lowdown on Aston Villa's pursuit of Stephen Gerrard from the Midlands. And Ashley Priest, the Aston Villa correspondent at Birmingham Live, is back here with us on the Blood Red channel. Good to catch up with you as ever, Ashley. And this is a story that's moving very, very quickly regarding sort of Aston Villa's hunt for their next manager and everything pointing towards Stephen Gerrard wanting to, 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 to take the role on. It sure is. I think he's, he's Christian Perslow's number one target. It has been for a while. I've been told from reports he's been lining, lining him up for the past six months, but I'm not sure too much into that. But he's he's the main man Perslow wants. He likes a big name, Perslow. Villa fans will remember Perslow's pursuit of Thierry Henry prior to Dean Smith. Perslow had a big say in getting uh, John Terry to the club back as a, in a coaching capacity. He likes the big names. He likes the, the names in the bright lights, as it were. And he's got a very good relationship with Stephen Gerrard from his time at Liverpool. Albeit that was a brief one. But, but yeah, he's the man. He likes what he's doing at Rangers. He sounded him out. They're having talks now. Nothing, nothing's done yet, guy. Of course, Joe, I can come back, come back on his decision and say, Do you know what? I want to start around you and see that project out. But yeah, it's all pointed towards Gerard being the new uh, Aston Villa manager. But yet to be done. But an exciting one. And I'm expecting an announcement by Friday. Should talks continue the way they are? Yeah, no, very interesting to kind of see how quickly it's come together. But I suppose before exploring more kind of what Steven Gerrard will face at Aston Villa, I think it's probably right to touch on the man who left and the man who was sort of such a big part of Aston Villa's success of getting into the Premier League. And a man I know a lot of Villa fans had a lot of affinity for in Dean Smith and how quickly into this season he's kind of been relieved of his duties off the back of a huge kind of revamp in the transfer window over the summer. Yes, still sorry for Dean Smith, even now, even what days it today, Wednesday. It's still raw for me as well, having known Dean Smith in a professional capacity. And um, yeah, he fought his corner. He got called in on Sunday with Perslow at Bonnymore Heath. And um, he fought his corner. He said, I haven't had, my, I haven't had a £95 million pound trio available to me. Ings, Bailey and Buendi have been on the pitch for 35 minutes together all season. And he made a point of that. He's had injuries to deal with. I know, I know man, good managers adapt. Well, it's always going to be one of them seasons. And, and Dean Smith was adamant he, he, he finished top 10, which again would be a progressive season, having finished 17th, 11th, and a top 10 finish. But, Guy, the Villa owners want it all now. They have uh, 300, 300 million pounds they give, give Smith. They've overhauled the squad, they repl replaced Jack Grealish, and they want instant success. And they, they didn't like losing to the likes of Arsenal, Tottenham, Wolves, Southampton in the run they've just been on, because these are the clubs Villa want to uh, surpass. So, um, yeah, the owners mean business by, by what they've done in the last few few 48 hours, getting rid of Smith. Thanks, thanks, Dean. We want to move on to the next level now. And Perso's leading this this charge, leading this managerial search. And I believe that there'll be interviews had. I think Johan Langer's having a big say. He's a sporting director. Villa have completely overhauled their stats department, data, first team analysts. Very, very scientific touch to Villa nowadays, similar to what Brentford are doing. And uh, Lang has a, a say in that, but Perzo wants the main money charge. He's, he's sounded out G Gerard and talks are ongoing as we speak. And I expect it to be wrapped up. Should Gerard want the job, and it's all there for him to take. But he'll be he'll be eyeing out the issues now. Backroom staff uh, level of expectations. Any, any money in January to spend, I'm sure there will be. So, yeah, exciting times. But to, just to touch on Dean Smith, he arrived as a fan guy, and he leaves a legend. His legacy intact. Um, he can go down Villa Park with open arms, you know what I mean? Not many managers can do that. Dean can. 
And um, I think I think he'd be pleased pleased with that. His legacy intact, yeah. He did really well. Yeah, definitely. You mentioned there kind of the talks that will be going on and kind of what will be getting thrashed out amongst those, as you say, were were expectations. So what will Steven Gerrard have to achieve at Aston Villa? Because, as you say, an awful lot of money been spent. There's a very ambitious hierarchy in charge now at Aston Villa. Kind of this thing been floating around of, oh, well, if Steven Gerrard goes from Rangers to Aston Villa, he's just going to, to kind of battle against relegation. It's anything but that that, that Villa want, isn't it? Exactly, but you say the two two points above the drop zone. They've got some tricky games coming up. Guy got Brighton at Villa Park with the first game for the new manager, looking like Gerard. That, that's no gimme. They get to Palace away then, again with the way Palace are playing, and then it's Man City, Liverpool, at Anfield. Funnily enough, on uh, December the eleventh, Palace guy, um, and then they've got Leicester as well, Man City, and people like that. So it's no gimme. Uh, the owners want European football. That's the, that's what they want. And I listen back to Perslow's end of season. A review kind of thing the other day in the video, and he was disappointed in his voice and the way Villa surrendered that that European charge last season. So it all points to European football. They want, they want to be rivaling the West Ham, the Leicesters of this world. They want to be right up there, and they believe Gerard's the main man to do that. Um, should should a deal be announced? So we'll see. I think Rangers will be dragging their feet as well. They'll be want to make sure it goes goes smoothly and if they can entice him to stay. So, but yeah, the owners aren't missing about guy, and they want European football sooner rather than later. What do you think it is then that's that's kind of led to Christian Perslow settling on Stephen Gerrard? You kind of mentioned the personal relationship. You mentioned the fact that he is a big name. But intrigued about what you were saying before about kind of the, the scientific approach. Obviously, Rangers are a club who, who operate kind of with a sporting director and that kind of model. It's a yeah. model that's worked really well for Liverpool as well. And, and Gerrard's kind of shown that adaptability as obviously there's always that eye from Liverpool as to how he's getting on as a manager and could he one day return to Anfield. But what do you think it is that has, has kind of led to him being this this first choice that Perzo has gone all out to go and get? It's the name, guy. It's the name. He's done really well at Rangers. Steven Gerrard. I mean, catapults Villa back amongst being talked about again with the big sides. Gerrard's the manager there. All eyes will be on Villa Park most weeks now with Gerrard at the helm, should that happen. And Perzo, he's one for the big names, like I've said, in... I think, he, I think he was during his time at Liverpool. He used to go into the dressing room and he used to be quite pally with the, the Torreses and Gerrard of this world. He likes being around the best players. He, um, some of the photos you'll see at Villa Park and Villa were winning games. Perzo went on the pitch to see the Grealishes and people like that. So, very prestigious. Um, and Perzo wants to be the main man to, to, to catapult Villa back amongst the elite and he believes Gerrard's the man to do that. That's his number one target and should that happen, he'll be at the helm. How big's the job then for whether it be Gerard or whether this this yeah. kind of does collapse at the last minute and it's someone else? How big is that job at Villa Park for any manager coming in with Jack Grealish not being there and a new squad still being needed to to be knitted together whilst having to to pull away from that relegation zone? Oh, it's huge! It's a huge job. Um, Villa this season have been very confused in what they're doing. The players have lacked a the belief. They've, they've changed flip systems constantly. They're not not a settled side at all. But on the other hand, they'll have, they'll, play, they'll, they'll have players back after the international break. Big players at that. Esri Conta, he's back. Danny Ings back from injury. Adrian so he's back from injury. And I'm saying this, and I feel Dean Smith. I feel sorry for him because he would have had players back available. And if he'd have won that game against Brighton, should he have had that? I think it, it, it's, it's okay. But the ruthless nature of this attacking points at Pozo wanted someone else prior to Villa's run of five-five defeat. So, but yeah, huge job. Um, to do two points above the drop zone, and you look at the teams in the league now, your Leicester's, West Ham's, and even Palaces and people like that, Brighton, they're all getting better, guy. Um, and these are the clubs Villa wanted to be well beyond this season, even your Wolves, the Bruno Lager, I like what he's doing there. So, the teams in the Premier League are improving, and Villa did go at it, um, um, quite aggressively in the tra transfer window, replacing Grealish. But I think, I mean, as I said, they wanted to place the goals, the assists, and the the creativity of Grealish with three players, but you've got to fit three players into a system, not one. It's difficult, and that's what cost Smith his job. So, yeah, there's square pegs in round holes at the moment in terms of Villa's playing squad, and it should be up to the new man to get that right and get a set aside and get some results on the board quickly, quick, quickly, because otherwise the thing is start getting pointed again, and if Villa were to lose a couple on the bounce, and you start to, start to question the decision. So, yeah, a big job, a huge job, and that, that's an understatement, Guy. What's the feeling amongst kind of the fan base of going for, for Stephen Gerrard? He's had success at Rangers, albeit he has only had three years in management. Dean Smith had been kind of serving his apprenticeship kind of at, at Walsall. They went to Brentford and was always kind of on the rise, that thing. Mm. Is this not 
a bit of a, a risk regardless for, for Aston Villa of taking a manager from the SPL and, and kind of seeing what he can do regardless kind of of his, his name and stature within the game. Yes, it is a risk, but I think the appointments, should it be Gerard, as we're look, looking likely, is I think that'll give the dressing room a lift straight away. That respect is demanded instantly as he walks through the door. I think heads will roll as well. I think he'll demand more from the players. And when when, when John Taylor was there, there was that that level that that, that, that he raised the bar. And uh, when he left, that bar dipped again. And it was all, I think Dean Smith's one of his crit uh, critics I'll give him. He's, he's too soft at times and he protects the players too much. I can't see Gerard doing that. I think he'll hang him out to dry. Um, so, yeah, it just raises that bar, expectation. Um, I think Gerard having a, pa a passion to it. But, but yeah, amongst the Villa, Villa fan base, it's he's one of a bit, a bit of ner it's a nervy time. You don't know what Gerard's going to do in the Premier League. Is he going to take to it that well? Because he's, let's, let's not face it, God, it's a two horse race up there. And he has done well. He's, I think he's done well in Europe as well, which is which has impressed the own, Villa owners competing with, with big clubs like your Leon's in the, in, in the Europa League and stuff like that. So, yeah, interesting. But, uh, yeah, big job. And it, it is unknown. He hasn't, he hasn't managed in the Premier League before, so he'd be learning on the job as well. But he'd be backing himself to do that. He did that as a player, back himself as a player. I think he could back himself as a manager now, pitting his wits against your Pep Guardiola's and everyone. But yeah, I think he'll lift the dressing room, which will be a plus going into the next, next cluster of games. I suppose this is an appointment for kind of the, the here and now, as we were saying about getting away from that relegation zone. But equally, I suppose, looking longer term, there's going to be that understanding and realism, I'm sure, with the, even in the corridors of power at Villa Park, that if Steven Gerrard comes into Aston Villa and does a really good job, Jurgen Klopp's contract is ticking down at Liverpool. That ends in 2024. It's only two years off in the summer. And that if that offer then were to, to come his way from Liverpool or even the talk around if he's doing a good job at Aston Villa, is he going to be the next Liverpool manager? It will kind of, I suppose, be something that everyone's aware will be bubbling away in the background from day one, no? That'll be his first question to be asked at his press conference. That that would be what about this? This is a stepping stone for you for, for the big one you want. Um I think it'd be quite disrespectful to, to be talking about that. Um and yeah, I mean, should he fail at Villa? That Liverpool job's up in smoke almost if, if he's a failure. I don't, I don't think he gets that job automatically just because of his, his status there amongst the fans. So he'd be wanting to, if he does, does if he does a good job at Villa Guy, I think Villa fans will be happy and um, he takes them to the new level. That's fine. But um, he's got it all to prove. He's got it all to prove. And um, yeah, it's a tough one. But I mean, that, this stepping stone and Klopp's contract and he being, him being the next man at Anfield, he's always going to be there. But I think he, he'll play that down straight away. Um, he want to prove himself. I think he, he'd be buzzing for this job. Big chance in the Premier League. Not many, not many, I mean, not many bigger jobs come, come, come up than Villas, given that and, and what he's achieved. In three years in management, like you say, going, the Villa job's here. Huge job. Uh, backed by the fourth richest owners in the Premier League. They're going to give him cash. They're going to give him every chance to succeed and um, take Villa to the next level, which they want, want him to. So, yeah, a tough one, but the, the Liverpool... Um, Job will always be there and it'll always come up, but you want to do the best best at Villa Park. Should he get the job? Yeah, we spoke to those at, at Rangers before and they were kind of talking about Stephen Gerrard and the loyalties he'd shown before. Obviously, yeah. he came so close to even leaving Liverpool as a player to go to Chelsea, a last minute change your heart and yep. stayed where he was. That could yet still happen, I suppose, with this role as well. But the final question I want to just put to you, we asked kind of from the Rangers perspective, what's the pitch of convincing Stephen Gerrard, actually, this is the right move for you to come to Aston Villa, to step away from what you've been building at Rangers and started to bear fruit? Why step away from it now? when you've got kind of the club to what he'd been working to for, for over two years, for three years there at Ibrox. So why is it Aston Villa? Why is that the right step for him? Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a monster job, Guy. It's huge. If you get Villa back in Europe, legendary status, and you can really kick on the back. You've got, you've got owners with, with uh, bags of cash. They're going to give him that as well. He had the back in. I think he's got frustrate, frustrated at Rangers, given, given the uh, transfer budget he's had up there. But... He's going to be back to the hilt. Uh, huge club, huge fan base. And they're moving on to the next level. And um, what a job it is for him. I mean, incredible, incredible role to kick Villa on to the next level. And yeah, it's, it's a massive job. I can't it's I can't say that enough, guy. It's huge. Um, Aston Villa, one of the country's greats. And to manage in the Premier League at such a top job, or below, below the elite, he's, he's, he's going to snap your hand off. I'm sure of it. So talks will be ongoing now. You, you want to iron out his, his backroom team. And I think he, I think he's 
he'll make his mind up once and for all. There will be that that pull, Rangers. He's a loyal, loyal, loyal coach, and he has been loyal to them, um, given what he's done. So, yeah, I think he'll have the talk to Villa. I think come out away from them, and then he'll make his make his uh, decision once and for all. But yeah, it's a huge job for him. I think he knows it as well. Yeah, interesting to see how it does play out. Well, actually, thanks a lot for your time. If you want to keep across the story and the latest out of Villa Park regarding whether or not Stephen Gerrard does take that job, get following Ashley at Priest Observer on Twitter. Also, check out his fine work across at Birmingham Live. And, of course, you can hear his views as well on the Claret and Blue podcast as well. But, Ashley, as I say, really appreciate your time, as ever, for joining us on Blood Red. Thanks, Clive. Well, that's all we've time for then here on this special edition of the Blood Red podcast as we do check in on Stephen Gerrard's managerial future and whether or not he'll take that job at Villa Park. But from myself, Guy Clark, Derek Clark, who joined us earlier, and Steve Priest, uh, Ashley Priest, sorry, here on Blood Red. Thanks for your time and your company. It's bye for now.